BBC Three Counties Radio. It's autumn 1986. A small army of cast, crew and extras gather to film a scene for the then in the making Superman 4, the quest for peace. There are a couple of American cars strewed across the background. There's a hot dog seller on the street and an NYPD cop on horseback. Now this scene is supposed to take place in New York, just outside the UN headquarters. But of course, it wasn't. In true Hollywood fashion, it was Milton Keynes. You've never seen anywhere like it. Central Milton Keynes. You've never been anywhere like it. So why Milton Keynes? I spoke to Richard De Dominici, an artist and filmmaker from Watford, who was able to tell me more about the filming in Milton Keynes and about his own personal projects. Central Milton Keynes, shopping as it should be. So Richard, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, Now you are an artist and a filmmaker and you shoot Redux versions of famous films. So can you just explain to me what Redux shoots are? Yeah, it started by mistake in 2013. I was asked to make a piece of site-specific art in a cinema in Bangkok. So I suggested that I could make a bit of a local film perhaps. I found this rom-com, remade six minutes of it, I showed it to the people of Bangkok. I didn't know what they'd think. I thought they might consider it cultural appropriation or that I was mocking them. But actually, they some of the local reviewers said they preferred my version of Bangkok Traffic Love Story to the original. So what oh, was supposed really? to be a one-off in a cinema in Bangkok, I thought maybe this can work outside of a cinema. So I did one in Glasgow. I did a bit of Cloud Atlas, which was shot in Glasgow, but set in San Francisco. They shot it in Scotland to save money. The same thing happened. I showed that and the Scotsman gave it four stars. They'd only given Cloud Atlas, the film, three stars. So at this stage, I realised that something weird was happening even though I was making these kind of cheap low budget quick derivative remakes people seem to prefer them to the originals so I've been exploring that ever since so I've done almost 60 of them in the past three years it's really taken off so that is something that you're really passionate about doing these um, shoots it's really weird people think it's strange that I suddenly because it's not the kind of work I normally made beforehand I normally did kind of one-off bits of performance art Um, but there's Mm. a lot of similarities in that I've always been quite interested in impersonation, plagiarism. And I actually, I used to do background extra work to make a bit of extra money. Oh, really? And so I've kind of seen a little bit about how films are made and where they're shot. And I've always used to find that very interesting. Some background extras found it very boring, but I was always looking and learning. But that's brilliant, though, because you managed to you managed to harness those experiences and yeah. you know, put them into your it future all... work, which you know a lot of people won't do if they aren't don't have the interest and they're not passionate about it. It's not an original idea, either. That's the other thing. Like A lot of people remake scenes from movies. I'm not the first person to think of that. But what separates mine slightly is that I always try and do it in the exact original location. So it's all about the site specificity of the place. I think that's what keeps me doing it, is because I'm addicted to that strange feeling that you get when you realise you're on a film set. I notice it in some of the participants as well, especially Superman, because I didn't realise how many Superman fans there are. And people get really into it, especially some of the places we've found in Milton Keynes people are not normally allowed access to so all these superman fans were having a really amazing moment so there's a nice kind of redux community springing up around the world i've taken it to about 10 countries now it's insane yeah brilliant so so when you when you go to do uh, a redux any of your most recent ones yes. where yes. how do you go about finding the original shots well it depends on the film if it's a big popular movie like superman 4 Sometimes people have already found the locations. Other times, no one's ever found the locations, and I literally have to drive around if it's a foreign one. I I remember when I was looking for Muriel's wedding, I was just driving around in Google Street View for hours looking for identifying buildings. So sometimes it can be an extremely laborious process. It makes the reward better, though, doesn't it, with um, knowing that you've put the time and effort into it in the end. It it makes the end product so much sweeter. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a treasure hunt almost. And actually, normally most of the work is in the pre-production. I'd say 90% of it is trying to find the locations and getting access to them. Yeah, so have any of those locations changed? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you go there and it's completely different. So you can never be completely sure. But it's always good to have a little bit of spontaneity, I find. So um, in terms of Superman 4 Mm. and talking about Milton Keynes, where exactly did you shoot? So uh, there were about three main locations. The Winter Gardens in Milton Keynes doubled as the Daily Planet offices and also Metropolis Museum 
was filmed there. It's now a Bannatine's health spa, and they very kindly let us in. Also, um, where Argos's headquarters is was used for the Daily Planet interiors. And then outside Milton Keynes Railway Station is where they shot the scenes that were supposed to be the United Nations. Superman comes and he makes a yes, speech outside yes. the UN, and he leads a bunch of children across the UN Plaza. And it's not, it's, it's Milton Keynes Railway Station. But they did at least use a few New York-esque props. There was the occasional kind of yellow taxi cab, the occasional New York police officer. There was a red fire hydrant that moved from scene to scene, from shot to shot. It was the same hydrant, and they just placed it yes. around wherever they could to make it look a little bit more New Yorkian. And the product placement was shocking in that film. <laughs> the budget was so low, I think they just got every company they could. So there was cola companies and pizza companies everywhere. And we actually embraced that too. With my other work, I'm normally quite against that kind of thing. But for the Redux project, we thought, for Milton Keynes, let's embrace it. So we had a pizza sponsor. Yeah. Instead of a hot dog van, we had a pizza van. We really went over the top. Another amazing thing that started happening that happened with Superman is one of the original actors from the original film was in my Redux which was amazing. The hot dog vendor, who's a trained Shakespearean Mm. actor called David, he played the original hot dog vendor. He gives a hot dog to Superman. And we managed to find him and get him to come back and reprise his role. So he's in exactly the same outfit. (laughs) Yeah, he's 30 years older, but it's recognisably him. And he came back and did exactly the same piece of acting. So stuff like that started happening now. They're getting less and less of an obvious ridiculous parody and more of a kind of almost like a, a simulacrum. Richard, where, where can people go to see uh, the Superman one and also all your other Reduxes as well? Well, if you go to thereduxproject.com, you can see everything that I've done. If you go to thereduxproject.com forward slash Superman 4, that's a Roman numeral for IV at the end, um, you can see the Superman Redux, which is 10 minutes long, which was the longest one we've done up until that point. And uh, you can see two behind the scenes videos and you can also see some footage from the premiere. And so you can see the documentation of the whole process there. Uh, Can I also just tell you, uh, Martin, who was our Superman, I chose him, A, because he was a big Superman fan, B, he had his own Superman costume, which saved a lot of money in the budget. (laughs) Um, Unfortunately, he was scared of heights. So when it came to doing the big flying scene, which we actually did in camera as a practical effect with a big access platform, and it goes about 100 feet into the air, yes. and it was donated by a local crane company, he was terrified. Even though he was harnessed in, I'm very pleased that he was willing to go up in it because normally he's a little bit scared and reluctant to go up tall <laughs> structures. But that is how much he loves Superman, that he was able to overcome yeah. his fears. So really, you know, the Redux project, it, it's changing people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> In more than one way, it's changing people's lives. And are you working on anything at the moment? Uh, just now, actually, I agreed to do my first Bollywood redux, oh, really? which sadly doesn't involve going to India because we're just filming some scenes from a Bollywood film that was shot in London. Um, okay. And I'm currently trying to figure out how to take it to North America. And if it ends there and if I end up in prison, so be it. <laughs> well, Richard, I hope you don't end up in prison. Um, thank you so much for speaking to me today. Thank you. And if you, if you ever need someone with a chiseled jaw and a hunk of a body, you know, yeah? Superman next time, you know where to find me. Send me a picture, yeah? I'll put you on my casting agency list. Yeah, I will. <laughs> thank you very much, Richard. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that... If this program has taught me anything, it's just how blessed the three counties are. Over the last hour, we've visited only a handful of film spots across the three counties, but there are so many more. I've been Guy Lambert, and I'll leave you with this. You're never more than two miles from a film location, so make me proud and go out and find them. (laughs) 